What's up guys, this video is about Captain Boost and which Captain Boost you should be using. Uh, I think there's two that really stand out so far this year. Uh, two that can be used on pretty much anybody's teams. Uh, whether you're, you know, balling on a budget or whether you have every card in the game, these two can be used and can help you win more games, right? Uh, going into the year, Captain Boost were portrayed as going to be this huge thing, this massive uh, kind of like theme teams in Madden, but in reality it didn't really work out like that, at least not so far. They could change it, they could change how useful they are, or the requisites to get each boost, but uh, I'm going over two that I use, or have used, uh, that are extremely useful. So, the first one, there's not a lot to talk about, right? It is David Wright, uh, I mean he's like 50k on his own right now, and shouldn't be on anybody's team really um but it's who he boosts right he probably has the most useful boost of any captain uh gets the satis to maxed out against lefties with max clutch gets griffey to almost max against lefties with max clutch uh boost jeter a little bit gives him some fielding uh gets otani to like what uh, like 116 contact against lefties with maxed out clutch almost. I mean, it makes him elite. Uh, and then you got Chipper, who it doesn't really do anything for Chipper, other than it gives him diamond fielding at third base. Um, so that's pretty elite. Uh, Jazz looks better against lefties, and he would have max clutch. You could actually justify running this Jazz in any lineup with that. Uh, Javi Baez looks pretty good, lacks against righties, but... The clutch is elite at 119, I think, or is it a 15 boost? It might be a 15 boost. Yeah, it's 15 batting clutch, so that would be max clutch Javi Baez. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a phenomenal boost, but it's more so a topper. The only people it's really helping on my team is Tatis and Griffey. Uh, but, you know, all around, it's, it's a great boost. If you're not running one or if you can't think of one to run, it's a good little boost on the side. Uh, it makes Jazz really good. I probably wouldn't run Jazz without it. With it, I think he has a serious argument to be in some of the best teams in the game if you really like his swing. Uh, the next boost that I want to talk about is a little bit different. I'm not running it anymore, but for a period of time, I did run it. Um, if you were just asking me how I would run it, like ordinarily, I have to go assign him. I think it has a lot of budget potential, basically, with this one. Um, I mean, if you're sweating it and you just have all the best cards in the game, then you're probably looking at something about, like, is that enough? That is enough. All right. So if you're sweating it and you just have, like, the best cards in the bullpen in the game, you're looking at this, right? Castillo, max hits. Uh, Hoffman max hits, Soto max hits, Chafin close to max, Michael King halfway there, he's really good, like 110 hits is pretty elite right now, turns Loisaga into an amp pitcher to an amazing pitcher, Taylor Rogers gets maxed, and uh, anybody else you want to put here, the new Joe Kelly if you want gets maxed, I don't think his pitch mix is too great, but another option. The other way you can run this is to have just a supreme, like just budget squad right you go out you get the hoffman for like 50k whatever it takes to get him and then he turns a lot of these like low golds that don't look very like viable that wouldn't make your team ordinarily into some elite elite cards um i'd probably run like shribner he's got a really weird release um probably keep chafin and soto in because they're free cards keep lies again he's a free card um and if you're balling on a budget, Michael King's a free card. I don't love him, but he's free. If you're balling on a budget, I mean, this is a fantastic bullpen. This is a bullpen that can be competitive at the higher levels in the game. You got Alvarado with 105-113 here with an outlier sinker that I have seen myself on Hall of Fame and Legend. It is pretty nasty. Has a cutter. Has a very good routine mix. And he's playing down right now. If he was not playing down, he would be absolutely disgusting. Uh, Hoffman, obviously, is a good viable pitcher. Probably not as your main closer, but maybe as like an opener or the first man out of the pen to throw the tempo and timing off. He's really solid. You got Chapman. They didn't give him outlier, even though he's kind of deserving of it with how he's pitched so far this year. But, I mean, he's playing down, and he still looks completely elite. Good mix. Has a fastball, has a slider, has a splitter. Good little three-pitch mix. Has a two-seam to throw hitters off. 
Shrivner, I mean, these are pretty good through nines. They're not elite, but he has a messed up arm angle. If you want another one with a messed up arm angle, Ottavino, I mean, he's playing down right now, but can touch 96, 97, has all of the meta pitches. Uh, he looks phenomenal, has very comparable through nines to uh, Shrivner. And then finally, I think another honorable mention. Not seeing them. Brooks Raley, right? If you need another lefty specialist out the pen, if you don't have like Soto or something, uh, Brooks Raley's great. He's always playing up. He looks pretty decent. Uh, probably not my favorite pick, but if you need another lefty, he can fill that role. Uh, turns Chafin into a really good card. Uh, he's just kind of mediocre in the charisma path by himself without the boost with the boost he's one of the better relievers in the game uh, i don't know if he makes like a top end bullpen but he can be competitive loizaga is very competitive with this boost uh this is more so for hall of fame and legend where having really high hits through nine completely shrinks your opponent's pci it'll help on all-star for sure um but it's primarily for higher difficulties and then michael king looks pretty decent although i'm not a fan of his pitch mix uh but I think, I mean, this is a more than co like comparable bullpen to a top end bullpen in the game. Uh, and really, it's going to run you what? A 40K plus, I mean, all the, he's probably 500, 500, 500. Uh, and then all these cards are grindable for free. Uh, it's a good way to get a pretty decent comparable bullpen for like 40K, right? Because if you're running just the best bullpen in the game, right? If I'm going to throw my bullpen out here, Hater's 70k on his own, right? Gagne's like 40k on his own, I believe. 35k. He's the price of uh, of what's his name? Uh, of Trevor Hoffman. Uh, Devin Williams, 25k right there. Uh, Lee Smith, 10k right there. Billy Wagner, whatever the AL West is nowadays to get done. It's a lot. Uh, who else? I probably still have Hoffman in there anyway in the best bullpen in the game, so that's saving you some. And then it's between like Nin and Castillo and some cards like that for that five spot. But uh, yeah, I mean, this bullpen's better. I would say this bullpen is better for sure, but this bullpen is also like 150, 200K, not counting Billy Wagner, who's like 600K to do on his own almost. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're balling on a budget, Trevor Hoffman's the way to go. David Wright's a good little accessory if you already have a really good team. But, uh, yeah, could not recommend Trevor Hoffman enough. If this was helpful for you guys, feel free to like and subscribe. Peace.